Hello eBay friends, it's Suzanne A. Wells. Thank you for coming back for another video. And this is the video a lot of you have been waiting for. If you are wanting to learn international shipping, I am going to show you exactly how to do it without using the Global Shipping Program and a few downsides to the Global Shipping Program that may be prohibiting you from getting sales. So I encourage you to bookmark this video so you can come back to it play it as many times as you need to while you're learning to do this it's not hard it's just something else to learn and it is the number one way to increase your sales so let's get started first of all why you should be shipping internationally if you are not eBay has over 171 million active users worldwide. That is a statistic from 2016, so it's obviously more by now. 49% are in the USA, so that's 84 million customers are in the United States, but 51% are outside of the USA, which is 87 million people. Okay, so you are ignoring and refusing to serve 87 million people who want to buy things because they're on eBay when you don't offer international shipping. And this includes Americans living abroad. Uh, some will have APO, FPO addresses. Those are actually considered domestic, but you've got a lot of Amer Americans living abroad who want to buy things on eBay. And so you're ignoring them when you don't include international shipping. Now, international customers have an affinity for American products, all kinds of things, stuff like jeans, certain brand names like Ralph Lauren, toys, electronics, pop culture, digital media, CDs, DVDs, health and beauty products, even food and grocery items. They want to buy things. And international customers purchase used items just as often as American customers and even more so they recognize quality and understand that high quality items are durable and hold their value and in a lot of cases supply is a problem in their home country so they look to eBay to get things cheaper it's very expensive to buy these things new in other countries and so they're trying to get a deal on a good quality item by looking on eBay to buy it so just remember that international buyers are just people like you and me who want to buy things. They just live a little further away. So there's nothing to be afraid of. They're just people. Now, how did I learn all of this? Well, I had a business selling health and beauty products from Costco, Walmart, Sam's Club on eBay UK for four years. Some of us figured out back around 2007, 2008, well actually I think it was 2000, yeah 2007, um, that we could put things on the eBay United Kingdom site and people in Europe would purchase them. This all started because someone figured out they could sell certain items that were not over-the-counter items in um, United Kingdom so things like desitin diaper rash ointment that you can't get without a prescription um, they can't get or at the time they couldn't get toothpaste with peroxide in it uh, things that are very common over here Benadryl Tylenol PM um, I sold all kind of things like um, Ben Gay and mineral ice and all those kind of things for muscle aches and Mederma scar cream for when uh, you uh, hiding pregnancy stretch marks and just all kinds of stuff. Aveeno was a huge brand that was very popular. So I sold all these things. I had like a um, drugstore business where I was selling these things for three, four, five times the shelf price and shipping them overseas every day. So I got real familiar with how to do uh, international shipping. Now that business died because the exchange rates fell through the floor in 2008 when everything else happened and it just was not a viable business model. Then Amazon came along and I switched over to doing grocery and health and beauty on Amazon. So, uh, but I did 
this business for quite a while and on my blog eBay selling coach I would often talk about products that other people you know I couldn't do it all myself it's like other people could do this too and I would put products on my blog um, things that they were buying over there so like dry L was one of them and I also talk about that product in my video about why you should wash thrift store clothing you can use dry L on the um, dry clean only products also stuff like lip balm just all kinds of products that sold well in on eBay UK I was sharing that information on my blog so that is where I got my international shipping experience so I did sell and ship out about 300 items a week for four years all international and they went all over the world and what was happening was people in other countries would go log into eBay UK and buy things and um, so I was shipping to Asia Australia all over the place even though the sales were coming off of eBay UK so if you are afraid of this process let's first address your fears before we go into any information about how to do this because I know a lot of you are afraid of this and anytime you try something new it's natural to be scared scared of it because it's new because you don't know what to expect so that's totally normal but just realize this is a process that's been done thousands of times it's no big deal anything that can happen there's a solution to it and if you're not doing it you are really leaving money on the table so fear number one package gets lost that is definitely an understandable fear because we've got packages going all over the world of course you might think it's going to get lost that's understandable but there are solutions if this happens and we're going to talk about that fear number two you will lose money um, you know isn't it expensive to ship international well this is the opposite you are going to make money your buyers are going to pay the shipping you don't have to worry about that so we're going to discuss exactly how all of that works fear number three is you don't really even know what you're afraid of you're just afraid of the unknown because you've never done this before and that's totally understandable by the end of this video you are going to feel very confident and know how to do this you're going to be able to take baby steps and work into this at a comfortable pace this is not an all-or-nothing thing you can start off taking baby steps doing a few countries at a time a few English speaking countries at a time and work your way into it you don't have to start off worldwide and be totally overwhelmed so I want you to feel confident and feel like you can do this because you can thousands millions of sellers already do it it's not a big deal so let's first talk about why eBay's global shipping program can hurt your business now this is not bashing eBay in any way I love eBay but sometimes they come up with things that have a downside so I'm just educating you on some of the disadvantages of this program and why it can actually hurt your business in some ways but eBay came up with this because they wanted to streamline international shipping and honestly this is something that just can't be streamlined and you know cookie cutter there's too many variables there's too many different countries to deal with and it there's just no way to really systemize it um, into one process but um, they were trying to simplify it for both seasoned sellers and for new sellers who weren't comfortable taking on that international shipping themselves and, and that's totally understandable because I hear this all the time and maybe you got sent to this video because you asked this question or said that you're scared to ship international so there is a fear out there um, I totally understand that now everything through the global shipping program is shipped priority and many items have customs fees added to them even if they're not necessary and this is how this is part of that streamlining where eBay is trying to make one process for everything even if it's not necessary so that means higher costs for the buyer and I have heard from international customers and, and if you're an international customer please comment on this video and uh, give us your input but I've heard from friends I have in Australia and people in United Kingdom and other countries that they will not buy from US sellers who 
offer this global shipping program because it's too expensive. So as soon as they see it on your the listing, they click away and they go find somebody who's shipping direct. So that tells me as a seller, I'm going to lose potential sales if I use global shipping because my international market does not like it. And that's part of the reason I'm doing this video. So when you ship directly, international direct, not using global shipping, you can ship first class international and you can ship items up to four pounds at a lower rate. So that makes the cost much lower for the customer and makes you a more competitive seller. So your items are becoming more attractive to these buyers in other countries because your shipping is lower. And that's the main focus of learning to ship yourself and not using the global shipping program. One benefit of GSP is the process for when an item gets lost. Um, eBay steps in and takes care of everything or if something is damaged they step in and take care of everything but that's okay you can figure out how to do that on your own because guess what I did it for many many years and thousands of items without ever using global shipping and I did just fine so priority mail has insurance and tracking which is why eBay only ships their items priority if they would use First Class International through the Global Shipping Program, I might do it because the cost is going to be lower. But as an individual seller shipping direct, you can add insurance on your own items um, using third-party services. Now what I mean by that is it's not through eBay, it's through something called like, I think Inkfrog has it, Ship Saver, Ship Insurance, InsurePost, there's a bunch of companies out there that will do this. So when you are shipping, printing your shipping label through eBay, your international label, you can pick down here to add insurance. And so you can do it right through eBay when you're shipping the item, or you can go to, um, this is what the workflow looks like here, you would click add insurance and it's gonna give you a price. Or you can go to InsurePost, who I use, or any of the others, and input the information about the package and pay for your insurance. Now this is not tracking, this is insurance. So that if the item gets lost, you can get your money back. And the cost to do this is very cheap. Um, you just fill out the, the basic information here about what the item is, the eBay item number. You'll need that in case you have to file a claim. Um, and all that inf information about the buyer. and so you have just bought insurance nothing goes on the package you don't have to put any kind of special sticker on there because it's not going to matter if it gets lost no one's going to be able to see the sticker so you've got the information here through your account on InsurePost and you can see the cost is pretty low like I insured an $85 item for $1.50 I insured a $60 item for $1.60 so it is a minimal cost um, so the advantage here of shipping it yourself is you can offer a lower shipping cost to the buyer and be more competitive, but you have to take this extra step and put insurance on your item if you want to um, for just a minimal fee. Maybe, what is it, like 20%? Um, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not much at all. Um, now, when I was shipping my items through my eBay UK business, I didn't insure any of them because my philosophy was if I insured every single one of these items it's going to be a dollar probably for each one so that would be three hundred dollars a month just on insurance so my philosophy was when something gets lost I'll just handle it and refund and most of the stuff I was selling was pretty cheap you know my cost was very low and that was just the way I chose to run my business I would only insure it if it was like fifty dollars or more so it wasn't um, you know I didn't insure every single thing and you don't have to I can tell you from experience that I only had a handful of things get lost and a lot of times the stuff would circle back I've got a video on that um, if you look in the right top corner you'll see a link to that um, about something that that took six or eight months to circle back to me um, it, it was undeliverable for some reason and I got the item back and I can resell it so eventually it makes its way back to you 
if it gets lost um, in my experience. So when you're shipping a uh, global shipping program, your item goes to Kentucky to an eBay shipping hub where it is then shipped, eBay takes possession of it and then ships it on to its final destination. But it could be opened, inspected, and repacked. And the packing may not be the way you packed it. So you're actually handing your a piece of your business over to some stranger who's working in the eBay global shipping warehouse, um, the shipping hub, you know, to repack your item and other people getting involved in your business blindly. You don't know who they are and, and how well they pack stuff. And okay, so yeah, if it breaks, you get your money back because it's through global shipping. But you know, I want that customer to get that item. I don't want it to arrive broken. Um, you know, they ordered it because they wanted it. So this is a part of the global shipping program that I really don't like that uh, somebody else's hands can be in my business. And I'm just, I'm very meticulous and I, I don't want to depend on someone else whose skills may be less than mine to take over that part of my business. So I want to do that myself. Okay, so let's talk about things you cannot ship internationally. Examples of restricted or hazardous household products that may be mailed internationally but have restrictions are lithium batteries, cigars, medical devices, medicine or drugs, and then we have items that cannot be mailed internationally at all, and that's aerosol cans, airbags, alcoholic beverages, ammunition, cigarettes, dry ice, explosive fruits and vegetables, gasoline, nail polish, perfumes containing alcohol, poison, and pool chemicals. Um, so on your perfumes and your fragrances, cannot be shipped internationally. You cannot do it at all. It can only be shipped in the United States, parcel select, it cannot go air. Um, but this is pretty much common sense. If it can blow up an airplane or explode or be dangerous at high temperatures, it should not be sent international. So your basic thrift store stuff like clothing, toys, household decor, linens, baby items, collectibles, craft supplies, those are fine. Um, if you want more information on what cannot be shipped internationally, you need to go to the USPS website and look up by country what cannot be shipped certain places. This is very overwhelming at first because you don't know what can be shipped where. So I'm going to give you a heads up on the main things to consider here. Italy is very, very picky. Um, I just don't ship there anymore because it's too hard to get stuff in there. The reason for this is because their sales tax is very high in that country. It's like 22 to 25 percent. So the Italian government wants people to buy stuff inside the country so they can charge in that sales tax. When they purchase from outside the country on the internet and it gets shipped in, those items don't get taxed or taxed the same. So Italy does not, you know, they're not in the game of, you know, encouraging their citizens to buy things online. So stuff just doesn't get in. Um, like one thing on this list that's prohibited is footwear. You can't send any shoes to Italy anything made of leather anything made of animal hair you know that excludes a lot of things right there so I just don't ship there anymore I just too many things didn't make it in so I don't fool with that um, Peru does not allow used clothing or shoes so you want to exclude that country if you are a clothing and shoe seller Brazil is getting more strict on used consumer goods and there's like a whole special list there so um, you might want to exclude that country altogether. And then Australia does not prohibit used bedding. Um, everything else is okay there. Um, but just check out that list to see what's allowed in different countries and just familiarize yourself. Now how to set up international shipping costs. If you've never set up any international settings, you'll need to do that first. And then once you have these set up, you can just do a sell similar from your own item and all of that will just carry over. You don't have to do it every single time. So you're going to have to think about where you want to ship. I suggest if you're brand new, 
to international shipping, you start with Canada, um, just Canada, or you can do the English speaking countries, Canada, United Kingdom, and Australia. Or you can just jump in and do worldwide, whatever feels comfortable for you. Um, your goal is to eventually be worldwide so you can sell more stuff. I used to track the countries I sent to and I had a map on the wall and I would put a little uh, pin in every country that I shipped to and it got up to like over 60 countries and so you will ship to a lot of places and it makes this business more interesting and fun but just do what what you're comfortable with and you can always you know graduate from there don't worry about what other people are doing focus on you and how you feel comfortable doing it so you can just revise a few listings individually if you want you can just go in to the listing and um, on your listing page over to the right there's a button that says customize and that's going to bring up your international shipping settings so if you've never shipped anything international you may not have that window on your page so you need to put it there so you'll get a box like this where you can check international shipping and then it will it'll appear under the domestic shipping um, now you can set different domestic shipping from international and so you can do like free shipping in the United States and then international with calculated always do calculated for international um, I'm going to talk about that in just a minute you're never going to do free so if you're doing free shipping in the US you're not going to do free shipping international they're two separate things and you've got to address that separately when you're listing an item or you can revise a whole bunch of listings with the bulk editor just go into your active listings choose the ones you want to revise and then go through that now you're always going to do calculated for your international if you're new and you're just starting um, the flat rate stuff is very very confusing when you're learning this so just don't worry about that yet you're not you're not going to charge a flat rate for international because it's not going to be fair to everybody so somebody in Canada is going to be charged completely different than somebody in Australia or Japan because the distance is going to make it more expensive so you're never going to do a flat rate like say you're a jewelry seller and you're putting four dollars on all your items you know for US that's going to work for US but that's not going to work for international so you've got to um, you don't want to use the flat rate like that on international only calculated so when you're listing your item you're going to um, go to your international shipping section and do the pull down right there and you're going to choose calculated cost varies by buyer location then you're going to pick your locations and um, you can add certain countries only or you can go in and add all of them and then exclude certain countries but you need to think through how you want to do it then you're going to add the package type and there are thresholds when shipping through the USPS up to three pounds 15 ounces and under 24 inches you want first class international you can use priority if you want but that's kind of defeating the purpose of not using the global shipping program and priority prices start 30 to 35 dollars so in most cases it's not cost effective for the buyer and they're not going to purchase your item the whole point is of doing this yourself and shipping direct is to get to that first class international and use that lower rate over four pounds or more than 24 inches long you have to use priority so that's a different animal now you can also do direct and global shipping you can offer both options in your listing so you can you can check that out if you have an item that is over four pounds that you want to ship through global shipping if you want to go just straight priority based on weight then you would choose that second option but as a new person um, you can always opt not to offer international on things over four pounds until you learn how to do this and you can just choose no international shipping if it's something that you don't want to fool with shipping um, internationally so this is how you're going to choose the first class international from the drop down here and just yeah there's all these flat rates envelopes and different things if you're new don't fool with that yet it's it's very confusing 
Okay, so then you're going to choose package type. In most cases, this will be package or thick envelope. And it's not required to fill that in, but if it's an odd shaped item, you should because the dimensions can affect the price. So just be mindful of the dimensions even though you are required to enter them. So this is where you're going to choose that package or thick envelope. Then you would add the weight. Now you want to add custom weight and enter the exact weight of the item. I don't advise you to, to choose like one to two pounds, two to three pounds, because when you're shipping internationally, the cost is calculated based on the exact weight of pounds and ounces. So when you go up one ounce, the price changes. When you're doing that one to two, ounce, uh, one to two pound option, it's going to calculate it for the highest end of that. So your rate may be too high and you might lose sales because you're overcharging on shipping. So have the item next to you when you're listing it with what you're going to ship it in and then mail it and get that exact weight and put it in uh, the custom weight section rather than choosing a range like one to two pounds, two to three pounds, whatever. Also, if you guess, you are going to be either shorting yourself or overcharging the customer. So you have to have a scale and you have to weigh this stuff when you are listing it. That's really important. So here's where you're going to choose the weight. You're going to go down to the bottom of this drop down box and you're going to choose custom weight and you're going to put in the exact weight of the item plus the packaging. So here's your summary for setting up international shipping. If you've never used it, you're going to go to add or remove options and add your international shipping. On each item as you list it, you're going to choose calculated shipping. Um, you should already have your country set up and unless you want to change them. You choose the class of mail, you choose the package type, enter the custom weight, and then exclude locations if needed. And then you're going to get to a screen like this. When something sells and it's time to print that shipping label, you will get a screen like this. And you'll get this red warning at the top. And all you have to do is go down here to the bottom and click this little statement here that says, I have read the shipping prohibitions and restrictions, and I agree not to ship any item prohibited by the legislation or postal or customs regulations. So you just click that statement right there that you agree basically. Then you're going to get your print label screen here and it's going to look a little different. Um, these do not print do not print these on the two to a page labels because the bottom piece is your record. You're going to cut that off and keep that and you're going to tape the top part of it on your package. If you print it on a two to a page label you're just wasting the bottom part of it so that's why I'm saying don't do it um, but this is what it looks like when you print it out it's gonna have everything filled in the customers address will be here your return address will be here the uh, what the item is and the value of it will be on there already and then you just go to sender signature here and sign it and date it and then you cut off the bottom and keep that for your records pretty easy now if you're printing your labels like this through eBay, there's a record of you printing it. So you can drop these in mailboxes, um, give them to your postal carrier with your regular pickup, nothing different. Some people think that you can't drop these in like the blue mailboxes or drop them off somewhere. Um, that's only if there's no record of you printing this if you're just mailing something and sticking stamps on it to another country uh, you know for security purposes but you can be tracked here so these can be dropped in mailboxes without any problem so I hope this information helps you get into international shipping and helps your sales increase um, I hate to see sellers that aren't offering this because you are just missing out on a lot of customers who want to buy things and we really do have such an abundance of products here in the United States it only makes sense to make them available to people in other countries so don't be don't be scared of this your customers are just people like you and me and they just want to buy stuff and they like to shop online too so um, I encourage you to go to my eBay shipping playlist 
and watch other videos about shipping. Um, I will be continually adding to this so you will have all kinds of uh, information here about how to ship things, questions about that. And let me know what you thought of this tutorial. Um, did you like it? Too much information? Not enough? Too long? Um, let me know what you think and especially if you are living in another country and you shop on eBay USA and you've had experiences with global shipping, I'd love to hear what they are. So give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and share this video. Thanks again for watching and have a great day. Bye.